Politics Unplugged. I'm Andrew Hugh, and one of the big news items out of Washington this week, President Trump naming his choice for a successor for retiring Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy. It is my honor and privilege to announce that I will nominate Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the United States Supreme Court. President Trump's nomination of D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals Justice Kavanaugh setting the stage for a what could be a bitter confirmation fight in the Senate. The 53-year-old Yale Law School graduate was a former clerk for retiring Justice Anthony Kennedy. He served in both Bush administrations and helped write Ken Starr's report outlining grounds for Bill Clinton's impeachment. Now, opponents expressed concern that Kavanaugh will vote to overturn rulings protecting minorities and abortion rights, something he refused to comment on during his circuit court confirmation hearing. If confirmed to the D.C. Circuit, I would follow Roe v. Wade faithfully and fully. That would be binding precedent. But what is your opinion? You're not on the bench yet. You've talked about these issues in the past to other people, I'm sure. The, the Supreme Court has held repeatedly, Senator, and I don't think it would okay. be appropriate for me to give up personal view in that question. case. Kavanaugh spent the days after his nomination meeting with leaders on Capitol Hill and joining us to help sort through all of this are professors Josh Wilson from the University of Denver and Norman Provisor from Metropolitan State University of Denver. Thank you, gentlemen, both for being here. First, what do you think about Brett Kavanaugh as the choice? I think uh, it's an interesting pick because when you looked at the, the basically the finalists, um, there were pluses and minuses with each. Uh, what's interesting about, I think, Kavanaugh is in some ways it's not a, a direct play towards Trump's base. This is not who his, his base really wanted to see uh, get the nomination. However, he does provide the administration with certain things that both conservatives generally will want and that the administration wants, um, particularly in terms of understanding executive power. So you're not surprised? It, it was when it came down to four. Who really knows what's what's in the the mind of the president when, with what he's going to pick? And there was actually reporting uh, on Sunday before the pick that there was a lot of vacillation sure. going on. Yeah, one think? of the things when you talk about the, the the four that we were talking about, you know, one of the things you could always talk with President Trump is that could all have changed depending on what was said on. Fox and Friends in the morning, and we might have had a fifth person just kind of emerge. One, and that's the uncertainty with some of the things. But I, I think it's, it's the kind of pick that is probably not very different in many ways than any Republican president would have selected. I mean, in, in reality, he's not on the super fringe of anything. Uh, he's very conservative. I mean, but all of those judges, remember, were, were vetted by the Federalist Society, by the Heritage Foundation. You're not going to find closet liberals. Mm -hmm among that group sure. of people. So I don't think he's very much different, but there are some issues uh, we've talked about uh, w with him very quickly, and, and that is he has a very long record. We were just discussing, Josh was just talking uh, when we were sitting here, about the long record, which is, is, is something they conservatives like, Republicans like, because they don't want surprises. Well, because one thing that people have noted is that Kavanaugh has written that he believes a sitting president should be insulated from criminal investigations. Uh, so. Given that statement, given what's going on with Russia right now, what does that say about Brett Kavanaugh? Well, that's going to be one of the really big things that Democrats will push hard on uh, during the Senate hearings is because of what he has said about deference to presidential power and, and uh, insulating a president from criminal investigation running right alongside the Mueller investigation, which has fresh indictments out now, you can see the, the immediate kind of collection of ingredients that Democrats have to work with and to continue to drive home over the course of this entire nomination process. So this could drag out the nomination and, process. And ap right? You're absolutely right. And part of that, dragging out things, essentially they're talking about the issues and going back and forth on you know, terms of an, to confirm and not to confirm, but they also have something else going on. They have a time clock mm -hmm. ticking. Because one of the things the Republicans were very clear about was they want to get this nomination in before the elections, and con nomination in and confirmed mm -hmm. uh, before you know, by the Senate before the elections. And when they have such a long record, I was saying before, they normally like that. But in this case, there's a time most uh, a large number most confirmation here are based on a sp specific timeline. We need to have it done by, so you can kind of let it flow a little bit. Some a lot of them are very quick. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, if it keeps going, that works against Republican interests. So they've kind of created their own sub-problem. It's not a major problem, but it's a real sub-problem they have to deal and with. And it's interesting you say that because Newt Gingrich said, I couldn't help but wonder how the Democrats are going to try to demonize this 
eminently likable man. Um, but you're saying that that he his record provides some strategy for the Democrats to, to really fight this. Yeah, and no one on either side, especially someone like Newt Gingrich, is really in the position to complain about demonizing people after we went through the whole Merrick Garland thing about not even holding hearings for somebody who did not come across to most people as a demon. Um, now, that was politics at mm -hmm. play and you know, sure. a little bit of power, and that's, that's part of the process. But it's always strange to hear people who've practiced the, the ill arts, the bad arts, preach against anyone else practicing it or supposedly practicing it. Yeah, and, and another thing that I would just say about that is that's that's a, a pretty expected uh, strategy is what you just heard in that Gingrich quote was play up the personal qualities, mm -hmm. right? And you see that in the in the rollout as well. Like sure. he's a basketball he's perfect, coach. Yes. Yeah. But there's a there's a very long record here that Democrats have to work with. As, as we were going over earlier, you've got uh, affiliations with Ken Starr, you've got the Clinton right. impeachment, you've got uh, Bush versus Gore. You know, it's it's a very lengthy record. And then you can switch from there to his judicial record on the DC Circuit Court. The DC Circuit largely avoids a lot of hot button issues, but there's other material in there that they that the Democrats can work with. For example, uh, striking down EPA regulation, mm. striking down con uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and so forth. I know we have less than a minute, and Coloradans are very familiar with Neil Gorsuch. Is he anything like Neil Gorsuch? How will if we both we all assume that Brett Kavanaugh will will be uh, approved, but. What if think? he's proved, confirmed, confirmed, I would yes. expect it to be very similar in a lot of ways, in a lot of areas that people are looking at. Uh, the erosion of Roe v. Wade, if not, it's overturned. But the ongoing, it's already been eroded, mm -hmm. and the ongoing erosion. So I think in a lot of areas, very pro-business and things of that nature, there would be a considerable overlap. I think we should get used to those two voting in a very similar way, most, yeah. not all, but most of the and time. And Josh, we'll let you have the last word here. Uh, so there, there is some uh, political science research on placing uh, judges on the, on the ideological spectrum and at least one report has him uh, to the to the right of all the justices except for Justice Thomas who he is mm -hmm. basically right up against so mm -hmm. there's some grounds to expect that he'll be more conservative but I totally agree that there are at least gonna be four justices yeah. that vote in a block for your right, thank you gentlemen as always for your insight appreciate uh, you coming thank in you. thank you all right back in a moment